Hi, I'm Jimmy Leslie, resident artist for Liquitex, and I'm going to provide you with the tools and knowledge necessary to perform a successful in-store demo on color mixing. It's important for your customers to know the correct primary colors for the chosen paint range. So for Liquitex soft body, we have quinacridone magenta, yellow medium azo, and thalo cyanine blue green shade. Also, people commonly refer to it as thalo blue green shade. So let's take a look at what happens when we do pick these correct colors. In this case, we've got our little chart here that shows quinacridone magenta, which is a cool and transparent color. Again, our primary color in the Liquitex soft body range. We've got yellow medium azo, which is a warm, also a transparent color in the range. And our third primary color is thalo blue green shade, which is cool and transparent as well. And what happens here is an artist who is new to painting often will see a whole entire range of products. They might see a whole entire rack of products in your store and think, wouldn't it be great to have all 100 colors or, or more in a range? My problem with that is I think that sometimes does a disservice to an artist because they really don't learn about color mixing. They start just using colors out of the tube and they miss subtleties that are apparent when you do learn to mix color. So knowing what these primary colors are are really important to getting clean secondary mixes. While it's important to have the proper primary colors, building on that palette, we're going to talk about a split primary palette today. So we've got cadmium free red medium, which is a warm and opaque color as opposed to our cool transparent quinacridone magenta. We have cadmium free yellow light, which is a cool and opaque color. And then finally we have thalo blue red shade, which is a warm and transparent color. Now oftentimes in a mass tone, that's the, that's the color squeezed right out of the tube, you don't pick up on these different characteristics, the subtleties of temperature. So in this chart, we show not only the mass tones, the color right out of the tube, but I have color mixed 50-50 in each case with titanium white. Now, we're gonna provide you with a demo plan that's gonna give you each step to doing this. But again, remember 50-50 right here. Don't get too caught up on that. You don't need measuring cups to do that. You can squeeze out approximate amounts and it'll show you the tint as opposed to the mass tone. And when you do that, it brings out the subtlety and it brings out the temperature and the color. If we look at the red column, you can start to see the differences in subtlety, especially in temperature. So the magenta having more blue content gives us a cooler tint here and then a warmer tint to the cadmium free red medium. Also, yellow medium azo gives us a warmer tint as opposed to the cadmium free yellow light, which is cooler. And then here's, I think, where you really see it in the blues. The, the thalo blue, both green shade and red shade, look very similar in mass tone, but then you can see more of the cool nature of the tint when mixed with titanium white as opposed to the more warm with the red shade. So green shade, red shade, if you think about it that way, you can sense where those temperatures are going with these colors. Now let's go through the steps that you're going to need to go through with your demo attendees to create our red and blue color mixes. To do that, let's get a fresh piece of palette paper. We're gonna put that right here. And then for the sake of a bit of convenience in our video right now, I've already put out some colors that don't need to be mixed. This, these are our initial colors we're starting with for the mixes. So if you remember, this is our quinacridone magenta right here our cadmium free red medium right here. And then the blue colors on the top in each case are our thalo blue green shade. And the ones on the bottom are our thalo blue red shade. So let's put that down. And a, a, a key thing, a tip that you wanna be aware of that you wanna remember and remind your demo attendees is that the thalo blue colors tend to be really strong. They can be overpowering and easily overwhelm other colors. So when we mix our ratios of reds to blues, we're gonna use less blue, a little bit more red for our initial mixes. Okay, we're gonna put out our quinacridone magenta first. I'm gonna put a pretty good amount of that out. And then we are going to take our green shade. That's gonna be our color right here, up top. And then we're gonna take our thalo blue red shade. Put that right down here. We'll make our initial mixes. When doing this, I wanna mix up enough color here so that I can make our successive tints that we're gonna make with titanium white. So initially, 
We'll mix this color. Again, quinacridone magenta and phthalo blue green shade. And once I have that color mixed, we'll clean that off, clean off our palette knife real well. And then we're going to mix up our bottom color here, which is going to be quinacridone magenta and phthalo blue red shade. And they're going to make a really deep violet, very, very strong, deep, deep violet. And again, we're going to see the characteristics of that color come out when we make our tints with white. So make sure that's mixed up thoroughly. And you want to kind of just pull all your color, flip your knife a few times, mix that thoroughly. Remind people to do that. Sometimes they don't do it enough and you get streaky color. So you want to do that. Put our palette knife just off to the side here for a second. And then what we'll do is I'll take our quinacridone magenta and phthalo blue green shade mix. And that's going to be our initial color right here. Again, very, very dark violet. What I like about a color like that is, again, it's going to come out when we put our tints of white in there, the, the subtleties of the color. But right now, that can serve as a black. And sometimes when people are painting and they use a black, like a Mars black or an ivory black, it gets to be so intense, it's, it's almost like it punches a hole in the surface that they're painting on. It's so dense. And this has got subtlety to it with the blue and the red mix. So that violet can be a stand-in for a black. You don't always have to use a straight black. I'm going to clean off my brush real well. Kind of make sure you have fresh water. Uh, another little tip to remind people, do that. Get, clean up the water from time to time. Sometimes it gets muddy. You want to be really clean about that. Going to take our bottom mix here, which is the quinacridone magenta and phthalo blue red shade. And we'll put our swatch of color there. Again, very, very strong. I'll just give you a better look at that. Okay, and those two colors we're going to see now we're going to take mixes with titanium white. And what we're going to do is, once again, clean off my brush. Put that off to the side here for just a second. And we're going to take our titanium white. And what we want to do is we want to show variations of our tints. You could do any ratio. It just depends on how light you want to make the color. So in this case, what we're going to do, we're going to take one part titanium white and then two parts titanium white. And at this point, this is why it was very important, as I said in the beginning, that you want to make sure you have enough color mixed here because we don't want to run out of this color. We want to mix it two more times right here. So again, let's take our initial mix up top here, what we did, which was the quinacridone magenta, phthalo blue, green shade. I'm going to take some of that color and mix here. Here's where you get to see the color come out a bit more. I'm going to paint that on there in just a second and you're going to see it. Mix that again very thoroughly. I flip my palette knife over a few times, um, trying to make sure I get that very thorough. Let's take a little time with it. Uh, don't rush it. It should be fun for people to see the characteristics of the color when it comes out. Clean off this again. You want to make sure you have uh, plenty of paper towels and things like that so that you can clean off. I'll kind of fold this over, make sure I have a clean surface on there. And then we're going to take more of this color, and we're going to do it two parts. Mix here as well. All right, now we're going to take that color and we'll apply those. And we'll see our mix there. there there's the beauty of that color really coming out with our one part titanium. Really get this gorgeous, gorgeous violet there. Again, how much of the ratio you change uh, depending on how much red and how much blue is in there going to make a difference. Let's put down see what happens with our two parts. Titanium white. Yeah, that comes out. Now if we were talking about, we're, we're using names that really describe the pigments that are in the color, so quinacridone magenta, phthalo cyanine blue. I would say if we were talking about designer colors, um, I would almost call that a, what you'd call a periwinkle or a color like that. But you get, really get this gorgeous, gorgeous color. Let's see what happens now when we also mix our variations, in this case, with our phthalo blue red shade. So we'll clean off our brush once again. These are things along the way. I, I, I want you to kind of keep these tips in mind. Just keep reminding yourself and reminding attendees to clean things off, uh, take their time. 
because all the work of doing this can go awry if you do have a dirty palette knife or a dirty brush or, or anything like that. So we're going to take some color right here. And we're going to mix. You see the red immediately. We see the red color coming out a whole lot more. And that's something that's not apparent when you see the initial mix because it's so dark. And again, going through the process of just making sure they're really mixing thoroughly. Once again, we'll wipe that off. And then finally with here, we'll get our lighter mix too. You can always make adjustments. You know, we're, we're doing something right now where we're making mixes that are approximate. And again, everything can change depending upon the ratio of color that you use. I think that's a little bit light, so I'm just going to pick up a touch more of the color here. Yeah, and work that back into it. So you can always make adjustments along the way. And I think that's a key thing that you want to impress upon uh, demo attendees, certainly if they're novices. People can get so caught up in specifics and rules that they, they can get frustrated. Um, and I, and I, I don't think that that should be part of the process. I think you should really try to enjoy the process. So once again, we'll take our initial color. And I'm going to place the other one down, and then we'll take a look side by side. I think you're really going to see the difference between red shade and blue shade, phthalo cyanine blue. And this is why white really brings out the interest in that color. See much more of the coolness that starts to happen here, much more of the warmth that's brought about by the reds. And you get something that's happening when you're using, uh, especially in this case, when you're using the quinacridone magenta with the phthalo blue red shade, your two primary colors that we initially talked about, you really get the strength and the, the beauty that you would expect in a secondary violet color. Let's take a look at our other charts that can be done exactly the same way. So in this case, we've got phthalo blue, green shade, and red shade. Those are our anchors right there. Those are our colors that are starting out the process. And this time with our cadmium-free yellow light and yellow medium azo, which is our primary color in the soft body range. Uh, same two colors right there. And again, you can see the differences here. R right in this mix, when you have your primary blue and when you have your... Uh, primary yellow, you really get bold, strong colors here. You see more of the warmth come out in the green here as opposed to a cooler green right here. And then when you get into our other variations right down here, you have softer greens in the mix. So what I find really interesting is that just with these two sets of colors right here, these variations of yellows and the blues, the range of 12 different greens that we have right here, and that's not even playing into the role what happens when we change our ratios or when we throw in other colors in the mix. So let's say a yellow oxide uh, might be a color that you could try uh, instead of one of these others, and you get different variations. And then finally our oranges. So in this case, uh, we have our anchors being the cadmium-free yellow light and yellow medium azo. And I find the beauty and the subtlety that happens right here. When we mix strong colors, uh, strong secondary colors, they, they become an anchor that we can again then dull down and get these beautiful ranges here, uh, almost autumnal colors that you get in this range. And I would say don't make color mixing a chore. That's something that you should impress upon your demo attendees. If somebody's in a college color theory class, they spend a tremendous amount of time mixing color and learning color. A whole entire semester, maybe two semesters. And it can be hard work. So my suggestion is use a little time in the studio when you begin your process. Sometimes I'm a little bit of a procrastinator in the studio. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with a painting that I'm working on. That's a great little time to play with some color as you put it out on your palette. Try different variations, try different variations and mixes as well, and write them down. Know what you are doing so that you can go back and refer to those notes. And I think if you do that, again, as something prior to a demo to get used to what you're doing and have fun and, and find out what your favorite color mixes are, something you can press upon demo attendees and encourage them to have fun, encourage them to make it a process that will enliven what they do in their own studios.